This is a special episode for a few reasons. Ah, oh, ah, oh. I heard it. If I didn't hear it, if this knife does not come out clean, then we're <laughs> Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? So you're probably noticing, this is not the usual kitchen I cook in. This is my home kitchen. This is where I live. This is where I exist. Clearly, the fridge tells all. Anyway, so I'm making clafou tea today, classic French dessert with cherries, and I was drawn to it by its simplicity. On the surface, whenever the recipe is one page long, I get a little optimistic. I don't think Bourdain is really messing around with too much here. He's not reinventing the wheel. It looks like we're gonna knock this out. Let's break it down. We're gonna need a pound and a half of cherries, pitted. I actually found a trick to pit cherries and I'm gonna show you. Three ounces of kirsch or kirsch, I don't know how to say it. One tablespoon or 14 grams of butter. Four ounces or 112 grams of regular sugar. Six eggs, four ounces or 112 grams of flour. One teaspoon or five milliliters of vanilla extract. And one tablespoon or 14 grams of confectioner's sugar. And something unique I'm gonna be adding, almond extract. Why? Well, back in the day when they first made clafou tea, they used pitted cherries and according to some people, when you actually cook the clafouti with the pits in the cherries, it gives almost this almond-like smell. So I figure I'm gonna hit it with like a shot just to get more of that flavor that has been foretold of the olden days. As far as special equipment, it calls for a nine and a half inch pan. I'm using a cast iron pan because that's what I have at home. I love cooking with cast iron pans and it kind of creates a cool rustic vibe. If you'd like, grab Bourdain's book. I have it linked down below in the description. Let's get making this thing. So these cherries, I actually already pitted up and I'll show you how I did it. There's a few ways you can pit cherries. One, you can use a paring knife. Two, you can use kind of like a firm straw and just pop it through the cherry. Take off the stem and just pop it through. Let me zoom in a bit for you. There we go, it's a little better. Twist it. Now it helps if you have like a firm straw. See, this straw sucks, but it's working. It's coming out and there's the stem. I had a firmer straw, but it was made of paper and it's melted. Try something different. It's actually a nutcracker, but it's doing the job and it's doing the job well. Again, just get it in through here and push through. And the cherry pit will just pop right out. Fast forward through this. That was actually very effective. Now we're gonna macerate our berries. It sounds way harder than it actually is. We take the kirscht or the kirscht. I fucking love cherries. And we just dump it in there. That's it. That's it. So this has to soak for an hour. We'll start the clock there. And then in the meantime, butter our pan. Again, this is cast iron. Grease the baking dish with the butter. Loop, just so my hands don't get all jacked up and dirty, er, get this butter. Really being thorough with this because I don't want anything to stick to this bad boy. All right, coat with a pinch or two of the sugar. And, you know, I don't know what that does. I really, I feel like it doesn't do much, but what it says. And then this goes in the fridge. Yes, just cleared it. <laughs> oh, don't look in my fridge, it's dirty as hell. Don't look in here. So we let those berries macerate for an hour. I'm gonna give them a toss every 15, 20 minutes and I'll see you back then. And we're back, it's been an hour. It's been a Mitchell hour, 50 minutes. There's definitely a change to the cherries, 100%. And I'm wearing a white shirt. I am not using my brain, but I chose this route. I chose this life to live. I started a cooking channel with a white t-shirt. That's pretty dangerous. I taste the alcohol, but it's delicious. From here, we mix everything in a bowl and put it in the oven. In a large mixing bowl, beat the eggs with a whisk. Nice and whisked up. Don't want to get them too whisked. Add our cigar and beat well to fully incorporate. We're going to mix in flour and the vanilla extract, and then a little touch of the almond extract, a little dollop. Now I'm just going to mix this, not crazy, but just to incorporate so we don't get, I'm imagining, crazy gluten development from the flour. Just one more go around. Okay. Oh, I forgot to preheat the oven. This could maybe benefit us because if there is any gluten development, it may relax now. While we're here, might as well do a comment of the week. My man, Mark, who has come here from Reddit. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you like the vibes. It's just me doing my thing, messing up, cutting myself, probably one second. That's a little better. And if you're into more of what I cook, I do meal preps on Instagram and I kind of show other little things I make. I have a Tuscan stew that's coming out. Phenomenal, it's actually in this fridge. I'm gonna totally eat this later. You can even contact me on Instagram. Some people leave really nice messages and it just kind of warms my heart when I see that. It's what keeps me going at the end of the day. Our oven's coming up to temperature. Let's mix in the cherries. Now what spooks me here is Bourdain doesn't really say whether to include the booze. Accumulated juice. I'm assuming that's everything in here. Fold these in. And them nice, pretty little guys. There really isn't much folding involved. It's so liquidy, you know? 
I'm actually gonna hold off on adding all of this liquid. I'll add a little bit of that juice. I'm gonna leave some of it there. See how she turns out. She's gonna go in the oven now. Turn the mixture into it. Here we go. Just drop it in there. I'd like to get it nice and uniform. Now we bake in the oven for 40 minutes. Look for a nice crust on the top of this and then serve it. Easy enough. It's been 15 minutes and look how this turned out. <laughs> oh, oh, I heard it. If I didn't hear it, a skewer should come out clean. I don't have a skewer, so I'm gonna use a knife. And if this knife does not come out clean, then we're All right, the skewer did not come out clean either. Oh no, Mama Joe. That's weird. I don't know what we can even do here. Yeah, man. Welp, she's gonna try a piece of the crust. powdered sugar. How could we forget? Da, da, da. It should be sprinkled on, but is what it is. I jinxed myself. I really did jinx myself with this one. It's going to be super simple. And I have a burnt omelet cherry pie sitting in front of me. Let's try it. Hopefully I don't get salmonella. The flavor isn't terrible. I mean, it's chewy. It's really chewy. The cherries haven't clearly been cooked through. I don't know what happened. If you know Clafouti better than me, clearly I need some help. I don't even want to try another bite. This is what happens. I wish it was a little more educational, but this is me. I really wish I knew where I turned wrong. Cooking, I can see when something's burning. Baking, you mix everything up and just pray to Allah that it goes right in the oven. Frustrating, yes, but I have much bigger problems that have much bigger implications in life. So it could be worse. I did make the dish. Is it getting a check mark? Yes. Is it getting a bookmark? Yes, because I am going to attack this again. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, come along for the ride. This was a burnt kofudi, but also back to Bourdain. You stay organized, you clean up after yourself, you do the best you can. We pull out our John, we pull out our thing. Welp, this was back to Bourdain. Ah.